I'm Gem and this is my January to March wrap up. So we do have a bit to get through, not as much as I would like for three months of reading um, and that is kind of part of the reason why I started the channel was to kind of boost my reading a little bit. Um, that being said there is quite a bit we, I did read a lot of manga at the start of the year so we're going to start there luckily I've not had any uh, one or two star reads that is a lie um when I first read this series I gave it three and four stars per volume like they fluctuated but the more I sit on it the more those threes begin to look like twos and those fours begin to look like threes so I think overall I would give the series two stars. 2.5. Clearly, I don't know. It was, uh, I can't say it. I'll put it here. Hitorajimi, my hero. Um, I started off quite liking it. There is a big age gap. And an age gap is not like the end of the world to me. Um, but one of them is a student and one of them is his teacher. And it's just kind of made like that's totally fine. And the more I sit on it, the more I kind of step away from it, I think it's a little bit uncomfortable. So maybe that's a 2.5, but I don't really have a lot to say on it. I don't, well, I read like seven volumes back to back and there were moments that were really cute and there were moments that were like you suddenly think wait so i don't know anyway i don't have that one so i'll just put it here uh, a three star read for me would be fourth generation head this one is i spoke about it in my haul which i'll link above this is one where this lack of consent is a is a big thing um the relationship with these between the two main characters is really not developed very well and it moves really like it's it's a strange one it it needed way more development uh, and then there is a third character that comes into play and the stuff that happens between him and our main character is awful and it's just kind of glossed over they get over it really quick and I didn't I didn't like that so it was a three star um Four stars for me would be the first three volumes of Case Heaven, Cast Heaven. Um, this is one I spoke about it before. Even though the stuff that happens in here is bad, it's portrayed as being bad. Like you're not supposed to think that this is okay. This is the stuff that happens is fucked up and it's presented that way. So this is set in a school where the social hierarchy is totally dictated by a card game that is played every so often and you do not want to be a lower caste you know that is you want to be top caste and it's just kind of about the stuff that they do to each other which is pretty awful but for some reason compelling to read um and then another four star is actually the continuation a fourth generation head which is jealousy so i read the first two volumes of jealousy um this is another one where there's a lot of like weird consent and stuff like that but these it's much more portrayed as these are really bad people this is like a mafia thing no one in this is a good person the stuff that they do to each other is not supposed to be seen as good or normal. Um, there is definitely an improvement between this and the follow-on series. I wouldn't say it's perfect, it didn't get a five star, but it's on its way. And then we also have liquor and cigarettes. So this is about two guys. There is definitely something between them. They have known each other for a, a really, really long time. Their families own shops across the road from each other one is liquor and one is cigarettes and these two guys have taken over it didn't get a five star even though it was really really cute actually um but there is just that thing in the back of your mind because 
the only way that one of them can act on his feelings is if he gets himself drunk. So if you're drunk, can you be giving consent? But if you're purposely getting drunk to act on a feeling, I don't know. So it's left me feeling a little bit icky on that bit. So a four star rather than a five star. Um, we then go, we're gonna just say this bit really quick. We've got three Genji Ito reads. These are, I've already wrapped these up. I will leave the Genji Ito wrap up at the top for you. I can't remember which side it comes up, but we have uh, Uzumaki, Gyo, and Frankenstein. Spoiler, they are all five stars. I absolutely love Junji Ito, and I talk about these more in that wrap up. So if you haven't seen it, feel free to check it out. And then the rest of my five star mangas are kind of series, really. So the first one is uh, JJK. This is, uh, sorry. Jujutsu Kaisen. This is about uh, Jujutsu sorcerers who use curse techniques to fight curses, and it follows uh, Yuji Itadori, who is not a curse user, but then he realize well he does something that makes him a vessel for the king of the curses, and he goes to Jujutsu High and starts meeting all these amazing people like my fave and uh yeah if you haven't been reading it and you haven't seen the anime and you're into shonen uh, definitely check this out because it is fantastic we've got uh moriarty the patriot this is like a prequel loosely based on sherlock holmes and i absolutely love it and i can't wait for volume three to come out i love that Moriarty is always seen as like the villain and yet I agree with him so much in some of the stuff that happens um definitely definitely worth a read if you like Sherlock Holmes or if you like kind of historical manga or anything like that definitely worth a look we then have volume one two and three of Coyote which is another BL manga and this is about one of them is a werewolf and one of them comes from a family of werewolf hunters. Forbidden love. It's just fantastic. Uh, Not Your Idol, volume one and two. This is about um, a girl. She's an idol and she is attacked. And she kind of like changes her appearance, cuts all her hair off, changes her name. And she moves to a new school and just kind of is trying to deal with what happened to her. Um, they never found the guy that did it so it's kind of like trying to figure out what happened and then the relationship that is slowly building between these two is beautiful and there's no word on volume three and i need it and then the last uh, manga that i have is tokyo ghoul volume four so i've been slowly collecting my series i've only got as far as number four but i have now collected further than that and I just absolutely love this series. I love these mangas. The covers are gorgeous. I love the size of the actual physical manga and everything. Uh, and this is about a guy called Ken Kaneki. Um, he is a college student and then he's attacked by a ghoul. And in the course of that, he is becomes the first part ghoul, part human. Um, and it's kind of him dealing with that and trying to settle into his life because now he's part of two worlds but not really fully part of either and it's just amazing I love this so that is the manga it's been pretty good on to some books I have three three stars but I only have one thing to hold up it's the Shadow and Bone series this was a reread for me I still didn't love it so it's just one of those things the original trilogy has never really hit the mark for me six of crows yes um but the original trilogy i thought i was enjoying it more this time round, but i really didn't i don't like the characters this is the problem there is no one for me to root for in this because i don't like alina i don't like the darkling i don't like mal the tv series the netflix series is a very different story but Original books, not so much. I have three four stars to share with you. So the first one is called Dear Laura um, by Gemma Amor. And this is a very short horror um, about a woman who, when she was a young girl, her 
friend was kidnapped and was never seen again and then every year on her birthday she gets a letter from the person that took him kind of taunting her and every time she tries to like get away from it he keeps finding her and it's just the impact that has on her life and never knowing what happened and trying to find the truth and oh really really well done very creepy definite four stars um, I don't know what it could have done to be a five star actually I was thinking about that I was thinking what more did you want for it to be a five star and I just I don't know you know like sometimes you just know it's not quite a five but still fantastic um, I then have The Rats by James Herbert this is quite a, a horror classic I would say not like as in a classic from like 1800 or something but it's from the 70s and it's a very well known horror it creeped me out for sure for sure it's about uh killer rats that kind of are taking over london basically it's set in the 70s i believe i believe he set it at the same time it was this thing but anyway when it's set there are still a lot of like bombed out buildings that haven't been sorted in um in london from leftover from world war Two. so there's a lot of bomb sites and these rats just kind of like breed and multiply and they get bigger and they just it's quite gruesome in places um I, just, I really enjoyed it it wasn't quite a five star some of the pacing was a bit off but I do kind of want to continue that series and see what else James Herbert has to offer I do have another whose books on my shelves too I think and I'm very very much looking forward to getting to them and then this four star was a totally random read for me I don't I had never heard of it before and it's called The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. It's an absolutely gorgeous cover and I did a trial box for the End of the World Book Club I think it was called. I couldn't afford to do it permanently but it was really cool the box and you kind of get like a, a post-apocalyptic book and then little things to open as you go so it has like page numbers on and at page so and so you open this first piece and there was like a song and like you scanned it and it took you to the song on Spotify and there was a book about growing your own uh vegetables and and all of course it was very very cool like I wouldn't want it every month but it was like something I would probably get again every now and again um and this is about um floodwaters waters rising and basically London becomes flooded and this woman is about to give birth or she gives birth as they flood and you know it's just the way it's told is really clever because it's not really it almost feels like like poetry but not like maybe some poetry it's very um slam poetry I, I don't know much about poetry as you can probably tell um, but there's something about it that makes me think of it the way it's kind of set out uh, you can see you know it's all these little things and there are no names everyone just has an initial and I read it in like one sitting um, I just there was something about it it wasn't something that I would read on the regular and I think that's why it only got four stars but it was it's definitely something that I would recommend if you're looking for something a little bit different a little bit out there um, yeah pick it up so did I say what it was about I said about flood floodwaters didn't I it's set in Britain they have to head north and it's just there's not really much that I can say without giving stuff away but it was a good read I enjoyed it and now on to my five star reads so far of 2021 so um the first is the galaxy and the ground within by Becky Chambers this is the final book in the Wayfarer series I just absolutely love this series. It's what I would refer to as like a quiet sci-fi. There is not really too much action. It is very much about kind of like the people and the relationships. So each one is set in a different kind of space travel type place. I'm so good at speaking. <laughs> it's set in a world in like the future where 
uh, humans have gone off into space and found other races and become part of something called the Galactic Commons because Earth is inhabitable and it's been that way for quite some time. So it's not strictly about humans in space, it's kind of about the relationship between different species, different, different alien races and how they come together. The first one we have Ashby, he was a human and he is left um, the Exodons, which are like the big ships that still hold most of, of the human race. And he's gone off and he has like a, a crew of lots of different races and he does like transport jobs and he they punch wormholes so that they can get make tunnels from one place to another to help you know, space travel. And they are just, that one felt like um, watching a TV show almost, because it was like lots of little episodes that kind of tied together. The second book took two of the characters we were introduced to in the first one and talked about their life on a space station where how they, they're talking about how they got there and how they settle in and how they interact with other people. The third book was based on the Exodon fleet. So it was Ashby's sister and you kind of learn about how humanity has adapted to living in space and, and all the things that they do to keep the, you know, the memory of Earth alive and to keep themselves self-sufficient. Um, then there's a little novella, which is very much about those first humans to leave Earth and how they kind of did it and found alien species and all of that. And then we come to this one, which is set on what I what I've referred to as like a like a space airport. So it's a planet where there's like lots of wormholes to different places. So it's kind of like a, a stop gap. You can stop there, you can fuel up your engines, you can like rest over if you, you know, you ha your, your time to use the wormhole isn't for like a couple of days or things like that. And then there is something happens when they're trying to fix a satellite and it explodes. So there's debris all over the place, so the wormholes can't be used. No one can go to or from the planet. So the people that are on the planet are stuck there. The people that are in the atmosphere, in orbit, are stuck there. And it's just kind of like them getting through that and getting to know each other. And there's one alien race that everyone normally shuns and one of those finds themselves stuck there and it's interacting with others. And so good. I really wish there was more of this, but I can't wait to see what Becky Chambers comes out with next. I just absolutely love the emotion that this series brings out in you. And um, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. The next five star was a reread and it's Six of Crows. I'm sure you guys already know what this is about. It's about Kaz Brecker and the Dregs, Inej, Jesper, Wylan, Nina and Matthias and going on a heist. <laughs> I mean, this is one of my favourite books of all time. This is like my fourth, fourth time reading it. Um, and I still loved it just as much as the first time. Kaz Brecker remains one of my favourite fictional characters of <sighs> that I've ever read. And I can't wait to read Crooked Kingdom and do my reread of that scene so that I can go on to King of Scars and then finally on to Rule of Wolves. So it's been a real Grisha reread Grisha reread this year. Um, and yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the next two together. We have Follow Me to Ground and Redder Days, both by Sue Rainsford. I saw Follow Me to Ground on Kayla's channel, Books and La La, uh, quite some time ago. Thought it sounded great, so I uh, got it for Christmas and gave it a go. And it's about Ada and her father. They live in the woods. They're not entirely human. Well, they're not human. And they can heal people. They refer to human people as the cures because that's what, you know, they come to them to be cured. And other than that, they don't really associate with them. They kind of are a bit shunned. And there is this special patch called, in the garden called the ground. They can bury people and it will heal them. And it's, it's pictured about equal parts horror and beauty and unlike anything you'll read this year. I can't agree more. 
Um, I can't. I don't want to go into too much detail because it's a short book and spoilers. But I just thought this was fantastic and so well done. So when Sue Rainsford brought out Redder Days, I was really excited to get to it, and I was actually sent this arc by um, the publisher, which was really exciting because I'd never had an arc before. <laughs> And uh, I read it and just thought it was fantastic. I just love the way that Sue Rainsford writes. So this is about these twins and they live in what was, what's left over from like, almost like a, a, a commune. So like, almost like a cult. And there has basically been this disease uh, that has like, started turning people red and does things to not just people animals my favorite thing about this is that you kind of just get dropped in and you have to kind of figure out what's going on and i loved it so much so much i love the characters i love the you're following two timelines from the start and what the twins are going through now and yeah i just these two Weird and wonderful is how I would describe them. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, definitely check those out. And then another five star read for me was Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. This has been on my, was on my shelf for, for a little while and I thought it sounded really cool. It was kind of pitched to me as grown up Scooby-Doo, <laughs> which is, is quite accurate. It took me a little while to get into it and then all of a sudden I was like, sucked in and just absolutely loved it and the the character Andy in this I really really loved her so it's basically there is um there was these four kids and a dog and they used to kind of hunt bad guys and solve mysteries in the summer when they were all in the same uh town together uh but one of them one of the things they solved turns out that it's actually quite a bit more fantastical than what it was portrayed as at the time and there's things that these these kids saw that they have been trying to ignore and trying to bury over the 20 year period or however long it's been I can't remember 13 years I think uh, over that period of time they've been trying to forget everything that they saw everything that happened to them but it's had a massive impact on their lives and and how they are coping with everything now and Andy basically decides they need to go back so she gets the two surviving members and a dog who is like the grandson of the dog that they used to have um, and they go back and try and figure it out and this is the fourth member who comes along for the ride in one of their heads so let's put it that way I just thought it was great I thought it was great there was laugh out loud moments there was really scary moments I just yeah recommend and we're down to the last two so the next one would be uh, is remember me by Chelsea Babulski Babulski this is I really I really really enjoyed this so it's set in like a hotel and this young girl her father is like the new uh, guest relations manager so they move into this hotel and it's a really old hotel and she starts having these dreams and these visions and then she starts working on this they want to do like a museum in the hotel and she finds out that there was a woman that was killed there and it's basically her realizing that some of the stuff that she's seeing is what happened to this woman and unraveling it all and there's a mysterious guy there who like acts like he knows stuff and you know it's just at the core, it's a kind of really beautiful love story, um, but it's kind of got these horror elements all around it and, you know, spooky haunted hotels and, and stuff like that. And I just thought it was great. So my final read so far to share with you um, was an easy five star. <laughs> and that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. 
oh this book this book is like a warm hug it's like everything that you want it's got a, oh god the cutest little romance ever and my favorite thing is that the main characters like the main guy that you're following is in his 40s and you know it's just watching him find this family and find where he's meant to be and oh it's just beautiful so he uh, we're following Linus 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 Baker and he works as a caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth and he is sent to this island where apparently like all these really dangerous kids are in this uh, magical orphanage and it's just him kind of like getting to know the kids getting to know the guy that runs the orphanage and just finding himself. I mean, you can see I've got the biggest grin on my face. I don't want to say too much, but oh my gosh, if you haven't read it, you are sleeping and you need to pick it up soon. So that is me done. I don't know whether I'll leave it another three months because this is quite long, but thank you so much for watching if you're still here. Um, if you've read any of these or if any of these are on your list and maybe I've convinced you to pick them up if they were like well, my five stars, I don't know. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of those that you've read or any that are on your list. And uh, yeah, that's me done. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.